Hey guys, it's such a nice evening. It's been so warm the last few days before the rain comes again. And yeah, I'm out here with the gang and I've got two more here. And yeah, of course, I was filling up the water. And of course, as always, I forgot to turn off the hose. And I think everyone who has animals and needs to do that watering they can relate for some reason you always forget it right and then it's like a river everywhere so yeah that has happened to me and what do you want to talk about today another update about Grindavik and what is going on with that eruption so very interesting guys let me go inside and then let's start the video so here we go guys back inside so scientists are still disagreeing has this thing been smaller or became smaller the last two to three days or has it not so the met office still says it has remained the same over the last two days scientists still say it is dying down so i don't know when i look at it compared to yesterday i don't think it's dying down so much um but we will have to see but there are other information that i want to let you know about so one thing is definitely sure that this eruption now has lasted longer than the three eruptions that we have seen so far in 2023 and in January and in February. This one is definitely the longest. And uh, as I said, the official releases is that the eruption has been constant the past two days. Of course, it has died down from the intensity that it originally had when it first erupted last Saturday. But since then, the last two to three days, um, the official scientists are saying it is kind of steady. And what we definitely can say, it's not dying down as fast as the last eruptions did. So it is an interesting one, that for sure. Also, the land rise underneath Swartzengi continues. It's still rising there. So this magma chamber that is underneath Swartzengi is not emptying out because of that. And that's why the... Scientists are saying this is an indication that the magma is still flowing there and it is also feeding this eruption. So how long can it do that? Well, I guess we will find out, but we cannot really predict it, right? Budvar Swainson, he's a natural hazard expert at the Meteorological Office. He says what is happening now is that it continues to erupt and it still flows and still magma is collecting in the magma chamber underneath Swartzengi while it continues with the eruption. So since this eruption has continued last Saturday at 8.23 p.m. Icelandic time, it has now lasted longer than the previous ones that have occurred in the same area. So absolutely the same area. And also what Budwar says, he doesn't see a sign that it is ending right now. It doesn't show signs that it wants to die down. But we've also heard in my last video, another scientist has said, well, it could happen very quickly that all of a sudden it stops. But um, this scientist from the Met Office thinks right now there is no indication that this could happen anytime soon. And he says, quote, this eruption has now lasted for about 68 hours. The December eruption was for 55 to 57 hours. And the January eruption is 41 hours. And the one in February was only 25 to 26 hours. Um, and right now, as it is happening, we don't see that it is ending. So interesting, of course, they did measure some air pollution in the capital area of around Reykjavik. Um, and that's, of course, that is caused by this volcanic eruption. And it's been all over on the Reykjanes Peninsula, um, especially in the southwest. And it's mainly sulfur pollution. But what they're also saying is that the pollution is low. So it's not at critical level. And the air quality expert at the Environmental Agency says uh, that it should be mentioned that putting children to sleep outside 
um, or babies that you just to get some fresh air should probably be avoided so it's not that harmless as it seems and the forecast is for southeasterly winds tomorrow um, so yeah this is probably not super ideal but um, as of right now it's not critical and guys, if you could do all of us a favor, if you could like this video, watch it till the end, that would be awesome. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. It would be awesome if you could subscribe so that you can always be on the pulse with Silky and with those guys. And there'll be an update about farm life pretty soon because I've got another project that I have to take care of. But now back to the video. And you know, um, the Swartzengi power plant had to be evacuated. Um, because of high concentration, but only for a short period of time. And then they were able to get back into the power plant to, to continue the operation, right? You need people there. Um, also something interesting about the chemical composition of the lava that we're looking at here now. And the interesting thing is they also want to compare it to the Fagradalsfjall eruptions because they did have some theories that the Fagradalsfjall eruption might have been fed by the same magmatic chamber that is feeding the eruptions that we have right now. So it should be kind of the same lava, right? So they are saying um, that the chemical composition of the lava that has been collected by scientists um, is chemically similar to the last lavas that we have seen in the eruption in the Sutnuka crater series. So that is really not a surprise. Um, they didn't really think that this is coming from a different magma chamber. So it indicates that the magma in all cases came from the same magma reservoir. They were doubting that a little bit in the January eruption because it was basically on a little bit of a different place where it erupted at the doorsteps of Dindavik, but also that it seems it's this, it's been fed by the same magma chamber that is located underneath Swartzengi and underneath the Blue Lagoon. Um, so, but they are saying that the lava that we see now from the Sutnuka Crater series eruption is different than the magma that was coming up at Fagradalsfjall. So basically, where are the differences? What they are saying, guys, is that the concentration of magnesium oxide is lower in the lava that comes out right now, that came out in previous eruptions at the Sutnuka Crater series. So that is an indication that the magma that we have here in the Sutnuka Crater series has degassed more than at Fagradalsfjall. And why has it degassed more? Because it was staying longer in the crust of the earth. So the longer it stays, it did have a more time to degas than the magma that has emerged at Fagradalsfjall. So to me, my conclusion would be, okay, they're not connected, right? So if you hear magma running, <laughs> magma running, oh my God, I'll leave this in here. I don't need to do some outtakes. It's not magma, thankfully. It's if you hear water running, I wanted to say, it's not from a hose that I forgot again. Um, I have the dishwasher running. I forgot that I want to make a video, so I put the dishwasher on, so... Yeah, so nobody is in the bathroom or something. It's just a dishwasher, I promise, guys, right? So, yeah, I thought this is interesting to learn about the magma concentration in there. But then I want to let you know about what another volcanologist says. His name is Arman Höskultsson. We've heard from him quite a bit before. So he says the eruption has reduced a lot. Well, it has reduced a lot since Saturday, right? But the critical point is what we're talking about the last two days. So can they disagree or agree on something here? But he says there is still some small rumbling at the southern end of that fissure, yeah. And what is interesting, he says he he thinks that there are about 10 cubic meters coming out there per second right now. So he says the eruption is slowly fading away. Um, yeah, it is hard to see. If you look at the life camps, it doesn't really look like this. Um, so he says the four eruptions in the last three months are all in similar nature and that they can be tracked back to the earthquakes that have 
happened on November 10th and on November 11th when that magma dike was forming the 15 kilometer long magma dike that even goes underneath Grindavik into the sea. And he says, this sequence of events always begins when the edge of the, where the two tectonic pl plates meet breaks. And that happened in November. And that's why magma then gradually began to flow into this magma chamber underneath Svartsengi. And then when there was enough pressure in that magma chamber, the it was able to move the magma. And then the magma was on the move and formed that tunnel, that magma dike on November 10th, coming with a lot of earthquakes because it was pushing through the ground. So the earthquake swarm on November 10th was really, really significant compared to what we've just seen while well, we have basically seen nothing in this eruption. Of course, because now there's already pathways and tunnels there for the magma. But on November 10th, it basically had to grind a completely new tunnel. And that's why there were more earthquakes. And then when the pressure was enough there, we then later on saw an eruption as well. Magma was coming out of the ground and uh, Arman thinks that this will repeat itself while we are still seeing new magma that is flowing underneath Swartzengi. So as long as a deep magma reservoir is still feeding that magma chamber underneath Swartzengi, it's going to be erupt or intrusion repeat. And right now the the time frame was like three to four weeks sort of thing. The only anomaly was basically we had something on March 2nd, but that was only a small intrusion, but eruptions were like three to four weeks. So yeah, this is interesting. And, but you know, I want to talk about Eldverb a little bit. That's west of Grindavik because people were thinking after the March 2nd event that something's flowing to Eldverb because nothing was happening, right? Because only 1.3 million cubic meters were flowing out of the magma chamber on March 2nd when it formed that intrusion. So that's basically two days days worth of filling. So that was nothing. So they thought we will see the next event in a few days. And then it was actually two weeks. So they were thinking, is it moving away? What's happening? So, but right now it isn't definitely not while we're still have a good flow path for the magma. But he says, as soon as Altwerp then later on will manage to rupture he thinks the whole volcanic system that we're seeing now will move to Altwerp because then it will be easier for the magma to come up there. So that would be, as far as I understand it, the end of the Sudnuka crater series eruptions. And then they were also saying if it erupts at Altwerp because it's easier there, it might be a longer eruption. But we have to see because this one is lasting longer already. So we will have to figure out how long this one will last. So yeah, that was a quick update. And of course, the next one will come shortly. So guys, what do you think? You think I should write Elon Musk and tell him I have the first Model T here before he even founded the company? That guy's 26 years old right now. So let me know. If you know Elon, just let him know. I'd love to have this horse in a Tesla commercial. That would be pretty cool. I don't know if you can hear the frogs behind me, but since I always forget to turn off the hose, there's a little puddle there and the frogs seem to love it. But you know, I love the sound of the frogs because this kind of is a sign that winter is over and that better times with more sun and warmer weather are to come. So I really love to hear that. Gets me in spring feeling, that's for sure. So guys, that was my update for today. So as I said, thanks for watching. Thanks for leaving this video a like and I hope to see you very, very soon with another update. And if you're bored in the meantime, check out one of my videos in the end screen. Thank you so much, guys. Bye bye.